Hello everybody, John Liebman here. Welcome to ForBassPlayersOnly.com. Uh, we're talking with Jack Cassidy. What about, you were with Jefferson Airplane in how long, how many years? Well, Jefferson Airplane started in 1965 and ended in 1972. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, you must have a, a good story. You can share something that stands out, whether it's a San Francisco story or a road story or a Grace Slick story or something. Is there anything that uh, you can think of off the top of your head that would be of interest to our visitors? Oh, I think, you know, I think the thrill for, for all of us, you know, was, was when we got a recording contract, we could come down to Los Angeles here where I live now and we recorded in RCA RCA Victor's studio uh, at Sunset Nivar which was a huge massive studio that you could pack 100, 101 streams in if you wanted to uh, and uh, I think for us unlike today where everybody uh, can have a complete recording studio on their laptop and then the only way you got the chance a chance to hear yourself back was if you if you if you got signed to to a record company and you and you got access to the equipment. And for us, I think uh, it was a thrill to come down and and record. When we came down in 1966 uh, to record our first album, we recorded it on a three track. You know, I had two tracks. It was basically a stereo track, but the, with the third track used to record and bounce to other tracks. And then the, the second album we did, uh, that was Jefferson Airplane Takes Off, we, the second album we did, uh, Surrealistic Pillar, was a four track. But you could get a lot of music done on a four track, and then it was, it was, a, it was a revolution. So um, for us, the, 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 the thrill of getting recorded and being able to work on your music and then hear it back and, and, and dissect it and, and hear how you sounded. Uh, and start to work. For me as a musician, then I got to really say, God, Lordy, I've got some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> Still, it's amazing what you were able to do with so little back then. We're so spoiled today. Well, you know, it, it, don't forget, it, it, all it requires is, um, you know, I've got recordings from the turn of the century. The music's wonderful. So, you know, it, it starts with, with, with the, the person and the music, you know. Right. The recording aspect is just mere, it's just the means by which to capture which is, which is there in live, real life. Right. Well, that that's a big deal too, though. That's a uh, that's a science that is forever evolving. Let me ask you, your, your, your passion for rock and roll and the whole San Francisco music scene, the late 60s, early 70s, is certainly palpable. But it, it seems there was another equally profound passion for acoustic-based music, for blues-based music. Uh, what, what is the Hot Tuna story? Well, that's, you, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, actually, what, what, was, what was unique and, and inspiring and, and forceful about the Jefferson Airplane was the diversity of the players in the band and the diversity for me as a bass player of, of the songwriters to work within the different genres. So I could really try a lot of different things out uh, and, and, and approach songs from many different angles. I think, though, that, that that at the end of the day, I'm a musician who loves the craft work of what he does, and I I, I like um, I, I I do that through songs, and I do that through um, the interpretation of those songs, and so there was there was a, a lot of material that Norm and I started to to work out together that didn't fit within the Jefferson Airplane format that we had always loved. And, and um, usurping and, and digging down into, into various more, more at the time, obscure musicians like, uh, like um, uh, Reverend Gary Davis and, and uh, Blind Blake and uh, uh, a, a number of others that we would somewhat reinterpret that music in the in the, in the instrumental uh, musical format of an acoustic guitar and an electric bass. And uh, that hadn't been done before. We didn't really think of it that way. We just thought of it that we'd pal around in, in the in various hotel rooms and work some of this material up that we really liked. Out of that grew 
you know, the, our own compositions and, 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 and Yorma's uh, own songwriting and our song, some, somewhat our songwriting together. And, uh, and a, a, a direction started to develop uh, as well as, as um, a, a feeling about the kind of music we wanted to present out to people and what we wanted to do with it. Uh, and uh, and it, to us, it was, uh, it, it didn't have the, the, the uh, hysteria or the political connotations and the, that, that came with the later, in the late 60s and early 70s uh, aspect that the, the Jefferson Airplane had. Uh, however, we thought that was just dandy because we really wanted to, uh, to get back to to the, the purity of the, of the music and and the and explore the interplay between the musicians uh, and and uh, within the song. So um, that's what our direction started pretty much, and it has continued in that exploring uh, exploring in, in that area up until this day. So many years later. Norm and I have discovered that we've now been playing together in some form or another for 53 years. Wow. Well, where did the name come from, Hot Tuna? Well, that's a little, you know, the name, is, the name, came, the name came out of a, 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 a banter uh, within the car. I, b- I believe we, after we recorded our first Hot Tuna album, we didn't even have a name for it, the band. It was... It was New Orleans, and Jack Cassidy, and, and, the, and this was 1970. We recorded over at the New Orleans house in Berkeley, and that was pretty much the pure form. And he had his acoustic J50. I had my I had a Guild uh, uh, modified bass by Ron Wickersham, um, uh, and uh, Alice Stanley had worked on that bass with me, and and. Uh, 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 a small 30 watt amplifier it had a really nice tube sound and and that's how we recorded it and uh, the record company asked us you know hey you guys you guys got a name yet so in discussing some of the lyrics of one of the songs one of the, one of the songs said uh, had a, had a lyric in it uh, what's that smell like fish oh baby <laughs> and some some jovial fellow in the car came up with hot tuna <laughs> and we looked around and we thought okay I guess we got a name for the band I love we it. didn't really uh, <laughs> we didn't really agonize over our naming the bands back in those days you know? <laughs> well what about Jefferson Airplane I mean what does that mean well Jefferson Airplane was a and all this stuff is on you can google by the way but all this uh, uh, Jefferson Airplane was again another situation where where I believe a friend of, of, of Jormis referred to himself as Blind Thomas Jefferson um, Airplane and and uh, out of that grew the word Jefferson Airplane and we stuck with that. I tell you, it, 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 was, the, it was the time of the, of the silly names. <laughs> And now you're stuck with it. Oh, it's, it's, you know, it doesn't you know, become something else. It's, it's sure. not, you know, why would, why would, and I don't even think it of stuck with it. It's just there. I'm John Liebman. This is for BassPlayersOnly.com.